When we move into greenhouses and other protected structures producing strawberries, we often encounter special situations or special problems with pollination of the flowers. So Mark, could we go over a little bit about what you're doing here in Arizona and other ways that you're aware of to handle pollination of strawberries in greenhouses? As you say, Mike, we don't have the benefit of wind pollination in the greenhouse here. So when we pollinate um, in this setting, we use just a vibrating wand like you might use with tomato. Works very well, but it's pretty labor intensive. When you have a lot of flowers, it can take a lot of time. Um, another way you could pollinate is to use wind pollination, but use a small leaf blower and just walk down the rows and, and blow the plants and the shaking of the plants and the flowers will cause the pollen, pollen to release and pollinate the flower. So kind of on a low power, just create artificial wind. Artificial wind. So could you also do things like, if you're a smaller scale grower, maybe a hair dryer with the, the, the just on the air option, not the heat option or other types well, of blowers? Well, a big hair dryer on a, on a no heat option is, is basically a really low power blower. So, but really that'll cool. work too. Um, and then you might target your flowers a little better. But again, any, any of those artificial wind situations should be, uh, good enough to, to pollinate your plants. So here you said you're using the vibrator. We can also use different types of wind. What other options might we have, depending on whether they're a larger grower or a smaller grower? Well, of course, there's bees. Um, we've used bumblebees in the past, but in this really small crop setting, um, they were just so aggressive trying to collect pollen from the flowers, they damaged the flowers and the fruit. Um, in a larger setting where there's sufficient flowers, they should be OK. Uh, honeybees are the most ideal, but in this country, we don't have small hives available for people to use. So we typically, um, if you're going to use bees, it's going to be honey, uh, pop, bumblebees. Now, there are some uh, bumblebee providers who provide all male hives. Now, the male bees are not fighting to keep the survival of the hive going with, with broods and whatnot, so they're just out to feed themselves. So they're a much less aggressive pollinator. And uh, we haven't tried those yet, but it sounds like it would work. So basically, bees are probably a better option for larger operations where you have a lot more, uh, the density, a lot more flowers, much more for those, those pollinators to do. Bees are going to visit the flowers multiple times a day, which is really important for strawberry because throughout the day, um, the viability of the pollen changes and the amount of the pollen available changes. So bees are great. Bees are the best. Bees are going to do much better than people at pollinating. And if you've got a big enough crop, you want to use bees. Well, let's, let's touch base on that. So, you know, you've got these different methods for pollinating, but are there certain times of the day? How do you know, you know when to flower? How do you know if a plow, flower's been pollinated? Do you just go through and do everything? What are you looking for? Mornings we try to avoid because uh, we'll have some residual humidity or condensation on the flowers, and that can make the pollen sticky, and it won't disperse as well. So it we try to, into the air. It doesn't fall into the air and evenly disperse on, on the fruit, the fruits. Um, so we like to wait till the crop is good and dry. So later in the morning, um, later in the afternoon, anywhere in between there, twice a day if you're manually pollinating is, is, is better than just once a day because you'll catch uh, a flower uh, in a better state for pollination. Um, so but early mornings, um, in the evenings, the flowers may have uh, be starting to, to close again. Um, so in that middle sandwich of the day, it's, it's really the best. So you're looking then for flowers that, what, they have stamens? You have visible yellow stamens? Sure. Basically, again, because we're a, a fairly small setup here, we pollinate everything that's got a petal on it. And that includes flowers that are probably have no more pollen to to hiss but we pollinate anyway, just to be sure. But if you look at a flower, you can see bright yellow stamens. Um, those are the ones that are, are, are ready to go. Uh, a flower that's done, you can see that the- Brown stamens. The brown, so they're, they're dehissed, they're, they're done. But again, um, using the vibrator, we just pollinate everything that we see that has petals on it. Um, if you're using artificial wind, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. So you just go through. So what are the problems that we talk about the importance of remembering that we have to aid pollination if we're growing these in a greenhouse because we don't have all that outside wind going on or natural uh, pollinators maybe. What, what's the problem if we're not doing that well or how do we know if, if we're, we're not getting good pollination? If you get incomplete pollination of a flower, um, you'll get a misshapen fruit. 
because it's, it's essential for those, um, this, well, they're not seeds, they're achenes, I believe, um, to be completely pollinated because they're sending the plant hormones to the, the, the tissue to cause it to, to fill completely. So if the fruit is incompletely pollinated, you just get a fruit that grew a lot on one side and not so much on another, and that's really not a marketable fruit. So you, you're just going to have to throw that away. So complete pollination is really important to have completely formed fruit that, that has marketability. So if we want those nice, perfectly shaped, large, we really have to make sure that we account for pollination of our strawberry crop. 